Right, so the A13 to Paris and then the A6 down to Lyon. What are you doing? I'm looking at the road to Lyon. Oh, why don't you just follow us? We're going there. Come on. <laughs> Jill, Demi, welcome to the show. Now, Jill, does it get more convincing than that in a quarterfinal? No, I think it was a it was a fantastic day. I did think it was going to be a very close result, so to come away with a three 0 win, um, and to say that we're in the semi final of a World Cup, even though we didn't get much sleep last night, just obviously probably still wired off the game. Um, it's just a great feeling this morning. And you scored two minutes and six seconds into the game, our quickest World Cup goal. Surely that settled the nerves quite early on, right? Yeah, I think in the games we have said, let's try and get an early goal, because I think it does just, especially the way we want to play, keeping possession of the ball, I think it does settle us. So yeah, well, I was pleased to get on the score sheet. Um, I was going to shout over to Ellen, and then I thought, well, everything's just hitting at the minute, seems to be going yeah. in. So um, I think she kind of miskicked it, and then luckily it fell to me. Yeah, yeah. And Demi, we looked in control from the start, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, I think obviously we wanted to start, you know, bright with the ball and I think we did, I think the kickoff helps that. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to take control of the game very early on and I think we did that and the goal uh, obviously helped as well. Um, I, and I think it could be more as well, so that's, that's promising as well. And this is our third consecutive semi-final, 2015, 2017 and now 2019. Surely this is our year, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's all going according to plan at the minute. I think we all seem pretty relaxed and um, we're just sticking to a process. Mm -hmm. Obviously we'll have a day off tomorrow just to so everybody can rest and then, yeah, we'll hit analysis and it seems to be Go a good again. feeling. Yeah. And this must send out a strong message. We just beat a top, top team. Uh, yeah, I think we we knew it was going to be obviously a hard game going into the Norway game, um, and they always are. But I think obviously we, we controlled it very well, um, and that's what we want to do. We just want to play our game, focus on ourselves, and I think you know moving forward we're, we're getting better with every game. Mm -hmm. And the atmosphere was incredible again last night. It really does feel like home games, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said that, I think because we've been to that stadium before as well, I was like, it, it's starting to feel like our home stadium. Um, but yeah, God, the crowd was fantastic. I don't know, how many was there? Over 20,000? Not sure. I think. But yeah, no, the, the crowd have been brilliant and obviously our, our families as well to get out to the games. Um, it hasn't been easy for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's good that they're, you know, able to come and support as well. But yeah, it feels like home games and it's, that's what you want, uh, familiarity going into games. Do you hear everyone cheering you on? I mean, my voice is kind of a bit gone today. Or are you just so in the zone that you don't even really hear no, it? No, you, you don't hear it. Yeah. Too, no, no, you don't really hear it too much. I don't anyway. Yeah. Um, it's not until after, and they're like, I was screaming, yeah, and I was like, well, I was concentrating on the game. We won't tell them that, though, so that they keep on shouting. We we'll hear every word, every chant, everyone. Uh, you had a very special visitor before the game yesterday. Let's take a look. <laughs> Right, what I love the most there is that Wrighty didn't even see Bex at all in the room, did he? <laughs> no, he just walked in and he was like, yo girls, and then he was like, Mrs B, and then he goes, 
David. <laughs> and we were just, oh, honestly, it was like a comedy sketch. At one point, I was like, what is happening? I'm just in a room, David Beckham and his family, Ian Wright walking in, and we're heading into a quarterfinals of a World Cup. It was a very surreal moment. What did they say to you? Did they give you any words of wisdom? Um, yeah, obviously, David spoke to us. I'm saying it like, we're best pals, David. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, he, he just... Uh, he said obviously he didn't want to complicate it, but he said obviously how proud he was and you know how proud it, you know with making the country and obviously for little girls and obviously Harper was there too, so he was he was saying how proud it is and good for her to have role models to, to look up and that she's been dying to meet us all. So yeah, it was it was it was really good and then Ian Wright was just oh he was hilarious. <laughs> he was so funny. Not bad for a pre-match chat. And Jill, I know that you are a huge fan of David Beckham. I've loved him since being a little girl. I waited outside the stadiums to get his autograph and I eventually got it once and oh, I was absolutely buzzing. But yeah, he's just he just walks into a room and there's just nobody that looks like him, honestly. I don't know if men need to up their game <laughs> or if he is just another creature but oh he's just perfect he did perfect. you fangirl a bit or were you quite composed well i was lucky enough to meet him a couple of years ago in the she believes so i think second time round i was a little bit more composed but yeah i still felt like i couldn't say to him like have a proper conversation because my heart was going like 100 miles an hour but i think it's because on a serious note i think because he's just such a nice guy like he must get hassled everywhere he goes for being such a legend that he is but he always has time for people and i think now he always say he He's my role model because I've always kind of like lived up to them values. Um, so yeah, I, I just think he's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right, before we get onto your Twitter reaction, take a look at these. Oh, what are these? Oh, wow. Where, is, where are these? Just all over. Just yeah, different yeah. clubs. Oh, wow. God, that gives me goosebumps. That was that was yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is so sick they did that. Yeah. That is so sick. A few of my friends are there, so I might be able to try and spot them on the video. As if the pubs are like that. I know, I know. Have you been able That's to insane. fully take in just how big that support is back at home? No. Um I was gonna say I don't know, you're not on social media. Like some of us aren't on, you know, social media, so it's you don't really you just become in a bubble. You just become our train and you like you don't want to read up too much and just enjoy obviously the tournament and stuff so people tell you but I don't think we realize like how, how big like that's what I'm saying like pubs are being filled which usually they wouldn't or I think my cousin was saying um, in Plymouth they were like advertising the game and you could get in early and there was you know there was food on and stuff so like that's that's becoming normal and that's how it should be and that's how we obviously want it to be so I don't think we'll realize the impact we've had obviously until until we get home but that is like really cool like really cool to see and Glastonbury showing the game well yeah. done Georgia Stanway yeah. that's really cool isn't it Georgia was adamant wasn't yeah. she I think our brother was there and he's been yeah. out to support us and she didn't want him to miss the game so yeah it, it is great and as Demi says I think we probably are in our bubble but I think it's good I think it's good because you kind of you can play down the tournament a little bit and just <clears throat> stay focused on it's just another game so it's going nicely at the minute, but yeah, as Demi says, hopefully we can we can do well and then take in all that support once we get home. Yeah, and the support has been amazing. Right, let's take a look at some of your best tweets. Okay, so France, USA tonight. Do you guys have any preference on who you'd rather face in our semi-final? I said last night when I got asked, you've got to play the best and beat the best to become the best. So I said, ideally, I'm not bothered who, who we get. 
I think I know it helps if USA go through with our Olympic qualification, so that's in the back of my mind. And I think since the start of this tournament, I've always seen us playing USA. I don't know why, so I'm going to go with I think it'll be USA. But as Demi says, we're, we're confident to take on whoever. Absolutely. And what I want to know, right, what on earth is Ellen White eating for breakfast? She, she just keeps scoring. She's on fire and she's just a record breaker now as well. Oh. Amazing, isn't she? I think the thing with Ellen is she trains so hard. She's always staying behind, doing extras, doing shooting practice. And I think for young girls, young boys who look at Ellen scoring goals, hopefully they realise that it all comes from the training pitch and the extra hours that she puts in. So to see this celebration all the time, uh, it's just great. And hopefully she can keep doing it. And does it make you feel more confident knowing that you've got someone in front of the goal that's in such good form? I mean, Jodie won the Golden Boot in 2017. Obviously, Ellen's in the running this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, obviously, like Jill said, she she works so hard and she's probably one of the most diligent players we've got in terms of everything she does, from eating, recovery, to training, like you name it, and Ellen, that, that's just Ellen. Um, so for me, it's no surprise to see that she's scoring all these goals and, you know, performing at, obviously, the world stage. So um, I think girls definitely need to look up to her and, you know, Ellen hasn't just turned up and she's just scored. She's she's put hours in and she's she's worked hard and you know she's just getting her rewards now, which yeah, is good she to has see. Grafted, hasn't yeah. she? Right. Yesterday we gave away Beth Mead signed shirt and signed boots on the show. Now today the prize is drum roll, please. <laughs> it is Karen Barnsley's signed shirt Yay. from the Cameroon game. Yeah. How nice is this? Is it nice. being washed? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's clean. It's clean. It's clean. Yeah. It's clean. I mean, there's no smells coming from it. Uh, and also, I'm 99.9999% sure that you cannot get this in the shop. So it is very, very special. So all you've got to do to enter, go to the link on the screen and answer a very simple question. We'll announce the winner ahead of Tuesday's semi-final. Semi-final. Ah. Mental, isn't it? Right, we have Al. FIFA Women's World Cup, France 2019, oh official sticker collection by Panini. Why, why are you saying that, Demi? You need to sign your sticker for us, please. Here you go, Jill, you've already done that. If yeah. you can do the honour of passing it down. Oh, Demi, Thank it's a so big much. moment. <laughs> yeah, That's we'll give you a drum And it has all 23 players in it, so keep watching, because at some point we will be giving it away. Now, Jill, whilst Demi does that, I mean, you've got quite the tour guide in Lyon, haven't you, with Lucy Bronze? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll be giving you all the tips, won't she? Yeah, I've already, the first thing that I'd already asked her about coffee shops. Oh, um, of course she you helped have. Us. And then as soon as the final whistle went yesterday, I ran up with Geordie Taylor and I was like, I've already got our coffee shop sorted <laughs> for Lyon. So, yeah, excited to get there. It's a lovely place. We experienced it with yeah, Manchester yeah. City um, in the Champions League. So... Yeah, looking forward to the next stop. Yeah, we can't wait either. Right, here is Rachel Daly on what it means to be a lioness. I'm Rachel Daly and I'm a lioness. Being a lioness to me means everything. Um, it's everything I've ever worked for um, and to play for my country is the biggest honour I could ever ask for. The biggest sacrifice I think I've had to make to get to where I am now uh, was leaving to go to play in America. Um, obviously I had to leave all my family behind, which was difficult. Um, probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do actually, but it was a decision I thought I had to make in order to play for my country and be where I am today. Obviously I came close to making the Euro squad but fell short of the final hurdle, so to be in the World Cup squad now with this group of girls and this staff, it, it, it's everything to me. My family has got me to the world stage, you know, without them I don't think I'd be anywhere near the person or player I am today. If my parents and my family were watching this right now, I'd just tell them I love them and thank you. Right, thank you so much for coming on the show today, guys. But seriously, do you, do you know what way we go from here? No, come on Demi, should we go and get coffee? Good luck. Uh, uh, good luck. Okay, thank, thank you. See you in Leon.